the ingredients for a stuffed potato though. Okay, buddy. I have black pepper. I have red wine vinegar. I have garlic powder, onion powder, badilla complete. Um, you could just use an all-purpose seasoning. I have uh, sazon goya. Mm -hmm. I've got the half of a pound of ground beef. I have about six of these, buddy. You know what this is, those green things? Olives. Mm -hmm. Stuffed olives, uh, pimento stuffed olives sliced. Three garlic cloves. I have um, about six cherry tomatoes. I have some lipstick uh, variety. That's what they're called, lipstick variety. These actually are our pimento. So what's in the olives is this. It's a pimento type um, pepper. I've got California Wonder variety of bell pepper, red onion, and last but not least, good quality oregano. Are we ready to Are we ready to put this thing together or what? Yeah. This is Wait. all the food we have. Look at it. Nice food. Get this. Get these ingredients to make stuffed potato ball. But you could also use whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You just true. you don't have to use these. You could just use potatoes, some salt and pepper. So you could also use some of this wine. Anyways. Okay, I put a little bit of avocado oil. I've got purple or red onions, you can say. Green bell pepper and the pimento. And uh, Max, you put in one olive, huh? Yeah. That's funny. All right, we're going to get, why don't we get a wooden spoon and you can see. If you don't see the olive, it's right there next to the, between the onion and the red, like that bell pepper thing. Oh, okay. It's between, like, right there. Why don't you get a spoon so you can stir it? Yeah! Right, you're mixing, right? Yeah. And now I'm going to add the tomatoes because I want them to kind of break down. Squeeze. Mm -hmm. With that light, it's kind of like making it like cool. Yeah, it's nice, right? Yeah. Very colorful. Scrape it from off the wall. Yeah. I have to make sure I mix all of it. Mm -hmm. You're doing a great job. All right, I'm going to bring the meat to keep stirring, okay? Okay. I'm gonna crush it. All right, the meat's in there. Okay, break it on up, right? Break it on up. <clears throat> okay, while you're crushing, I'm gonna go get the seasoning. And I also have to keep mixing this. Yeah, keep mixing. Ooh, I have a good idea. You can start mixing into the meat. Yeah, perfect. I'm gonna put some on here so it's extra delicious. Mm -hmm. And keep breaking it up because I want it to be separate. Okay, and then you can start kind of moving it away from each other like this. Like. Wait, let me crush this tomato. Okay. Crush. Hey, that was easy. I love cooking. Oh, you're very good at it. Okay, all right, let me get the seasoning. Wait, I'm gonna load the pan so I could just. That's a good point. Guys, look! We managed to make all this. Uh-huh, we did manage. So I put in the sazon goya. I put in about an eighth of a teaspoon of um, onion powder, garlic powder. And guys, by the way, I'm the one crushing and mixing this. I know kids shouldn't do this, but I'm still doing it. Mm -hmm. I put in the oregano, about a half a teaspoon. And what else did I put? Am I forgetting anything? Um, oh, and about an eighth of yeah, the badilla, the garlic powder, the onion powder, the oregano. And so all that's left to put in here at this point is... All uh, the the vegetables that we didn't put in yet. Yeah, the olives and the garlic. Well, there was one olive, so yeah. Wait, I, did I find that? No way I did. Found it. <laughs> uh, Wait, there's two. Is. There's two olives. All right. So I'm Wait, this one's popping now, but... Hey, I'm going to, you keep mixing, okay? Let me turn up the heat. We want to start this cooking really good and evaporating and cooking down the veg. Keep crushing. We want this nice and fine. All right, let me go get the olives. Oh, this is fun. Scrape it from the sides. Let me keep it on top. Sweet! Okay. 
Please. The last step is I'm going to add a, just a drop of vinegar. Oh, I hate vinegar. No, you won't even taste it. It's just going to perk off the vegetables. All right, so we tasted it. It tastes delicious, right? You didn't taste the vinegar? Oh, wait, this piece fell out. Okay, here. And we're gonna, we decided it needed more salt, so I'm going to add a tiny little bit of salt. All right, hold yeah, on. but you like hot. sprinkled it on the even layer. Uh -huh. That's okay, you're going to mix it all in. All right, buddy, we took it off heat. It's looking good. But I'm going to sprinkle a tiny little bit of flour in here, okay? Good idea. Uh, okay. Now you stir that all in. Already all gone. Uh -huh. Let me taste a piece of meat. No, I'm no. I got a giant. I got a giant poopy boy. Oh, nice. All right, here. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and add... wait. Sprinkle some. No, that's <laughs> we're gonna cook this just a tiny little bit more. Cook it. Mmm, -hmm. mmm, that salt. That's perfect. All right. The reason I'm doing this is to absorb a tiny little bit of that oil. We don't want to get rid of it because it's going to add moisture to our potato ball, okay? Yep, okay. Is that your technique? Yeah, but I also like doing this that I just made. Oops. Can you move it up? You're like working at the end of the counter. Okay, no, a little too up. I don't want you to burn yourself. Down. Okay, good. Let's take it back to the stove and cook it just a tiny little bit more. Okay. Well, That's no. weird. Like it turns the light on on this side of the kitchen, but not on the other side. So we're just gonna cook a little bit of the rawness out of this, okay? Yeah, yeah. You think it's gonna make it? Because you're gonna eat all the meat before we're ready for our potato balls. I know, but I love the meat. <laughs> okay. Wait. Nah, this one's perfect, nah, nah. You, all, you thought all of them were perfect. No, nah, but this one's actually. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. I think the flour also gave it a nice um, yeah. feeling. It, it still had moisture, mm -hmm. but it took away some, and it like tastes extra salty, like extra meat. Mm -hmm. All right, the next step is we have to get the potato mixture. And remember, make sure to like and subscribe. To like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <clears throat> I'm filming this for you, buddy. Yay. So you can remember everything we cooked together. All right, I'm turning this off now. All right, let's work on the potatoes. Okay, that went well, right? All right, the kids are getting along. All right, now um, I put the half of a tablespoon of all-purpose flour, and then I'm gonna add a half a tablespoon of potato starch. Okay, let me open the package really quickly. And then we're gonna mix. It's the same spoon. I don't wanna turn it into glue, so I don't wanna overwork it. The water was salted. I don't have to add any additional seasoning to the potato. All the water, you know, the water was salted when I boiled the potato. And this was about um, just under 500 grams of potato. <clears throat> Sorry, I woke up with a scratchy throat. All right, I'm just gonna mix it a tiny little bit more and I'm gonna let everything sit. It's really early in the morning. I don't even think it's 7 a.m. Okay, so now um, what you're gonna do is I've divided these into, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, 
Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so 10, makes 10 balls approximately. And then I just turned them into like this, like got the ball, put like my thumb in it, <clears throat> made a little indentation. And now with a small spoon, I'm gonna fill it. I have to put my, I have to use both hands for this. So I'm gonna turn off the phone for just a second. All right, now I put the, the meat in there, packing it really tight to the bottom, just leaving enough potato on the sides to close it up. And I'm just gonna work it over and then turn it into a smooth ball and repeat. Okay, before I close it up, I just wanna show you how it starts closing and you just keep bringing the potato up. And then using the, the other potato, rolling up the ball. It's okay if there's a little exposure, just make sure that, that it's completely closed. And we're gonna keep doing that. Okay, all of my potato balls are done and I had 49 uh, grams of filling left over. I'm gonna weigh the potato balls now. Like I said, I started, I did not weigh uh, my veg my capsicum, my bell pepper, my pimento, my olive, my garlic, all of that stuff, or I did not weigh my, um, my dry season. But like I said, it was just under 500 grams peeled. So let's scale that back even more. I think I started with about 450 grams, 455 maybe grams of um, peeled raw potato. So let's weigh the potato balls and see what they weigh. 550 grams for 10 balls stuffed. What can you do with this? Eat it <laughs> with a tortilla on toast with rice. So flavorful and yummy. Um, put it into an egg omelet, scramble. Get some diced potatoes and eat that. Does anybody need any reason to eat delicious flavored ground meat? All right, so that's it. 550 grams for 10 beautiful balls. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to just line, since this the potato balls are now on this um, plate because I wanted to weigh it and my, my scale doesn't um, have enough capacity weight-wise, to scale out this uh, ceramic dish that it was on. That's why I transferred it to the paper. But what I'm gonna do is sprinkle this paper with uh, a little bit of potato starch, kind of roll them around in the potato starch, and I'm gonna let them sit until I'm ready to put them in egg and panko. Okay, that's the potato starch. Just gonna roll them around. By the way, if you wanted to substitute the all-purpose flour in the in the mix, in the potato mix, because you're trying to keep them gluten, just add rice flour or you can omit it. Um, I just don't know how it's gonna hold up. It's a little bit drizzly in Southern California right now. We went through a heat wave and now it's sprinkling. So my potato balls feel a little bit tacky, like wet. So I'm just trying to dry that up. Just a tiny little bit. Um, <clears throat> another thing I wanted to point out is This is one that I really try to stuff a lot of meat into. And this is one that still has meat in it, but you see, you don't, you only see like where, where it closed up. There's a little bit of meat sticking out. So um, that's what it will look like with max meat. I don't know how it would work if you just, mixed the whole thing in the meat with the potatoes with no filling and then just it was kind of a whole deal also i wanted to add cheese 
that I forgot I wanted to do that to the last minute. Anyway, it's not really technically a traditional ingredient, but it would make it taste better because cheese is delicious. All right, I'm gonna roll them nicely and I'm going to kind of just pat them. I'm gonna try to like do this and kind of remove any of the residual starch off while I have a chance. They feel like mochi. I like the way that this feels. Okay, to one, uh, I'm gonna add one cup of uh, Japanese style breadcrumbs. This would be a good time to use your Italian style breadcrumbs. I'm just gonna run it through my mini uh, food processor because I don't want um, my coating to be this granular. If you're using a gluten-free breadcrumb, I would recommend this step. If you're using an Italian style breadcrumb, you can omit this step because those are a lot um, more, gran I mean, less granular than this. Um, the last thing I'm gonna say about the breadcrumb is that I like using the panko style only because it's lighter and then it doesn't brown as fast when I'm frying them. You want popcorn? Okay, I gotta get the kids some popcorn. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna try to make this quick. There's a lot of noise here with the my dryer and my washer. So you just put it in the egg. I already have the majority of them breaded. I just wanted to show you one. So I actually just use my hand. Get it in here because it can easily break as you see. But once you put it into the the breadcrumb, it's going to smooth it right out. Um, I recommend you while cleaning or washing your hands in between just because your hands get grimy and then you see it, it starts creating those little weird things. Little pockets that kind of get hard and they just kind of fall off in the oil and they don't, they don't taste great. So I've just been rinsing and drying my hands in between. Okay, buddy. And then put it to the side. Let the let the breading adhere. Let's do the last one. This was one egg. And as you see, it did the job. There was plenty. You can certainly use this egg and that leftover meat and make yourself a nice little breakfast treat. Okay, and that's it. Okay, I'm just gonna put this one back here because I don't wanna crowd these. Okay, time to wash my hands. I already have um, my oil um, getting hot. I, it's not actually oil, I'm just using a good quality lard. I would use a good quality uh, avocado oil. I do not recommend seed oil, but just use the oil that you're used to frying in. Okay, so I just gently put these in so that I just don't drop them. I, I would normally put it in and then drop it, but I only have one hand. So you get the point. Don't overfill. I think I won't put more than five. Okay, I managed to get six in here. There has to be enough room for the oil to circulate around them. And you really don't want to do a lot to them right now. You want the, the coat to sort of set. So here we go. Okay, so you have to be careful. That's what I mean by the breading. Um, if it's a darker breading, the breading might get too hot before the, the inside is heated through. Turn it down, don't panic, keep it moving. We're almost there. So your potato balls are gonna want to kind of explode on you. So you've got to follow the explosion point and kind of set it, 
kind of move it around a little, but being careful not to pierce it because then, then you're going to have problems. And don't, whatever you do, don't push down. You should probably be using a fork and a, and a spatula to keep them rotating. Okay, you see that? You see that, that right here? That, that's my little explosion point. So I'm going to put it face, I'm going to put explosion point down and try to get that to seal. Well, here it is. It's a, a holiday here in America. It's Sunday and it's football season. So, all jokes aside, that's why we're going to have these potato balls. My husband says he's, he's melting away with starvation. So I did have one casualty. I wanted to show that to you. This guy. And this will be for the chef. But at least you got an opportunity to see it. Let's try it. It looks moist and delicious. You see how thin the potato coating is stuffed with lots of meat. Yummy. Perfectly delicious. Mm. So moist. Okay, until next one. All right, bonus material. Remember that little bit of meat and egg? That tiny little bit that was left over, this little bit of egg, and this little bit of meat. So I just have a tortilla. This could be a flatbread, it could be whatever, but I'm gonna make my husband a quick little breakfast style burrito. I'm gonna put this in a 350 degree oven that's not even 50, 350 degrees yet. And then by the time I'm done um, reheating everything and making the little omelet thing or scramble, I'm gonna put it in, roll it, and we're gonna have a nice little treat. Into the world's smallest skillet, our meat. I added a tiny little bit of oil and those my eggs. Every last drop. Okay, this is off heat now. a little flipperoo and just wait for my tortilla to warm up and my cheese to melt just a tiny little bit. This has been a meal that so far it's taken me about two minutes. Okay, it's out of the oven. That just took as long as it took for me to put it in a somewhat cool oven. Um, and by the time it got to 350 degrees, hold on, let me pull this little piece of cheese. Okay, my son a little piece. All right, now let's get this guy. Our little egg. Our little egg meat mixture. We don't even have to cut it. I'll just roll it this way. I have a little bit of hot sauce. This is really spicy. Optional, you could add ketchup. And then I'm gonna roll it like a burrito. You could add more cheese, it has plenty. You could add feta. I'm just trying to give you an idea. Okay, it's rolled up. And, uh, you wanna pack this for your breakfast tomorrow, you could just pop it in the microwave. I'm gonna just roll it up nicely with two hands and then I'm gonna cut it in half so you can see it and then give it to my, hus my husband for a little snack. I just wanted to weigh it. <laughs> 158 grams for this cute little burrito. Not bad for a half a pound of ground beef, right? And an egg. Okay, I'm gonna cut it. And there she is. That's how we use up any little leftovers. I mean, in this case, we did the stuffed potato balls. But when you have little bits of meat and things, Try to use up all of your, look at how juicy, juicy time. Just yummy. All right, I'm gonna take it to my hubby. Let's see how he'll think of it. You're not at the dining room table today. Uh -uh. What did you think of these? 
Look great. Are they little and cute? Uh huh. Like mini burritos. Is this kind of inconvenient? Mm, a little bit, but. Little leftover utilization burrito. This wasn't the best idea to wrap them like this, I don't think. It wasn't the worst one either. Hmm, I love it. Well, what did you think of the potato balls? We didn't get to see your reaction. Fantastic. Just watching football. Mm -hmm. All right, adios, amigo. Oh, good. Mm.